Hello and welcome to our discussions on game theory. Now we have learnt about two methods. One is algebraic method and another one is ornament method. These methods are used to solve the games with size of 2 by 2 where A has two strategies, B has strategies. That is both players have two strategies. Now students often run in a confusion that both methods are same. Then why are we giving them different names? So if we see yes, the final solution is bound to be same. You may use a graphical method, you may use algebraic method, you may use ornament method, you may use simplex, linear programming, whatever method you may use, ultimate solution will be same. But the concept which this method is following is different. So here what we'll try and do is, we'll try to differentiate these two concepts, ornament method and algebraic method and see how they are different from each other. So we'll have them side by side. What we do in algebraic method? Algebraic method to solve game of size two by two. And here we'll have ornament method. to solve game of size 2 by 2. Of course, their solution will be same, but let us understand what is the difference between these two methods. For the purpose, let us say we take similar examples so that we'll be able to compare them. Let me take the example A, B, C and D. We have A1, A2, B1 and B2. Here also let me say, I take same question, A, B, C and D. We have B1, B2, A1 and A2. Now let us understand these two. So let us make an example over here and try to understand what is happening in ornament method. What am I? doing exactly in ornament method. Let us say this is 2, 6, 9 and 13. Now, we have strategies A1 and A2, B1 and B2. Now, if A selects A1, then best he can get is 9. And if something goes wrong, if he is not able to select this strategy, if B switches from B2 to B1, what will be the loss? From 9, I will be down to 6. If I am row player, if I am player A, definitely I would want in A1, I would want that I should get a return of 9. But I do understand that B2, B will switch to B1 to give me only a profit of 6. No issues. What is my loss in this case? 3 units. What happens in case of A2? If I take A2, definitely I love A2 because it is giving me a return of 13. But I do understand that B1 will suffer a loss of 13. Hence, B will switch to B2. B will suffer a loss of 13 if he takes B1. So, he, I also understand that he will switch to B2, thereby leaving me with a profit of only 2. That is, from 13, I am down to 2. It is only 11. Oh, sorry, a loss of 11. Now, this is clear that if I take A1, I would prefer 9. But B would prefer B1, that is 6, because it is lost for him. And I will be down by profit of 3. From 9, I am down to 3. In second case, if I take A2, I know that B will switch in a way that I will be down from 13 to 2. I will be down to 11. This is clear. Now, which strategy looks better? Obviously, this strategy looks better because I will be losing only 3 in worst case scenario. While here, I will be losing 11 in worst case scenario. It is good to win 13. But definitely B will make an effort to go to this cell, to go to B2. In that case, I will be suffering a loss of 11. This is what we mean when we take differences. 9 minus 6, that is a loss of 3 is possible. 13 minus 2, that is a loss of 11 is possible. Now, definitely there is no settle point. It is not a stable game. So, I am not sure. I am not certain that I will be taking this with the probability of 1 and A2 with the probability of 0. Or even... A2 with a probability of 1 and 
a1 with a probability of 0. These strategies are just not possible because it is not a stable game. So I'll have to take a mixed strategy. Now, how do I decide upon that mixed strategy? So what I'll do is, yes, this looks good. This is not looking so attractive. And I will leave the weights onto these values. What is the weight? What is the relevant importance of A1 for me? I will leave it to how worsely, how badly A2 is performing. A1 is as good as how badly A2 is performing. A2 is as good as how badly A1 is performing. Now, A2 is performing very badly. It is losing 11. So, we switch these. If you remember the ornament method, we switch these and A2 is only as good as how badly A1 is performing, 3. And then we divide by 11 plus 3, 14. 11 by 14, 3 by 14. These are the odds. If you remember the ornament method, we take difference of 6 and 9 and write it over here. This step was just to understand. We take differences, 9 and 6 difference, 3, 13 and 2 difference it is put against opposite. So, 11 and 3, 11 plus 3 is 14. Of these 14 games, 11 times I am taking first. Why am I taking this strategy 11 times? Because it is giving me lesser loss. Why am I taking this strategy only 3 times? Because there is a high likelihood that it might give me a loss of 11. And I have not taken this call of 11 or 3. I have taken a weighted call. A1 is as good as A2 is not performing well. A2 is as good as A1 not doing well. So, I am not deciding it. They themselves are deciding it. So, these becomes the odds. 11 out of 14, A1, 3 out of 14, A2. This was the idea of odds. That we were selecting a strategy. We were giving probability to a strategy according to how badly the other one was performing. A1 got a number of 11 by 14. It was performing as bad as 11. A2 got a number of 3 by 14 because A1 was performing as bad as 3. So, this is the idea of ornament method that you get your probability. Any strategy gets its probability according to the how badly the other strategy is performing. This is the concept of ornament method. Yes, as far as formula is concerned, let us see how algebraic works and how ornament works. What happens in algebraic method? In algebraic method, we assume that let to say this is uh, probability of B1 is X. Then probability of B2 would be 1 minus X. Obviously, probability of all odds is 1. In this case also, it was 11 by 14 and 3 by 14. 11 by 14 plus 3 by 14 was 1. So, probability is always 1. So, if this is X, this is bound to be 1 minus X. Now, what is the value of game? Value of game can be found out from this combination AX plus 1 minus XB. Or it could also be found out from Cx plus 1 minus x d. And obviously, these two values have to be same. So, what I can do is, I can say that value of game is a multiplied by x plus b multiplied by 1 minus x. This is value of game from a1. Also, it has to be equal to a2 also. We have seen this, that whatever is your strategy, value of game will be same. You can take it from B1, B2, A1 or A2 from wherever you wish. So, I am taking it from A1. Now, let me take it from A2. If I take it from A2, it will be Cx plus D1 minus X. If I expand it, it will be Ax plus B minus Bx is equal to Cx plus D minus Dx. If I pull all X terms, variable terms on one side and all coefficient terms on the other side, uh, constant terms on the other side. This becomes Ax minus Bx will have a minus Cx plus Dx D minus B. And if you write it down, take x as common, you will get A minus B minus C minus D is equal to D minus B. So, x becomes d minus b upon a minus b minus c minus d. This is the value of x. You can have the other odd also, the other probability also by subtracting this x from 1. This is method of algebraic solution. 
that we are taking a scenario, we are equating those values, we are equating the unknowns and finding out the value of the unknown. While in automant method, what we were doing? A minus C coming here, difference of D and B coming here. So these are the differences and how do we find out odds? D minus B upon some of these. So it will become D minus B plus A minus C and this one will become D minus B plus A minus C. If we have a look at this, this becomes D minus B A minus B minus C plus D and this one becomes A minus C upon A minus B minus C plus D. So if we look at them, value of X is D minus B A minus B minus C minus D exact plus D exactly same as we were getting over here. This time I was calling it X, this time I'm calling it odds. So yes, numerically these have to be same because we are trying to solve the same problem. So numerical they, they might be same, but conceptually both are different. Conceptually, I had, a, I had an unknown over here. I made a relation of that unknown. I equated two relations of that unknown and came to this value of that unknown. While here, I'm taking the odds I'm taking the gap, I'm taking the loss that I could suffer D minus B and I'm taking the loss A minus C and then I'm switching them because I'm, I, I'm giving importance to, to these strategies according to the weights of the other. D minus B comes here, C minus A comes here as we saw in the example divided by whatever is the sum of these two. So yes, numerically these two appear to be same but conceptually they are different. And if we are getting confused that the formula is same, obviously formula will be same. If we try to solve it using simplex also, then also ultimately if we run with unknowns, we'll see that our solution would be same only. So this was a little bit comparison, a little bit clearance of confusion between algebraic method and automant method being same. So formula wise, they might appear to be same, but conceptually they are different. In execution, they are different. In automatic method, we directly get values. While in algebraic, we need to formulate these equations. Then we get value of 1x. Then we get value of 1 minus x. While in this case, we get values directly. So yes, execution is different, but formula might look appear to be same. So this was it about algebraic and automatic method comparison of between them. Until you meet next time, do take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.